Welcome back. So let us now try to understand how we are saying that it will uh, reduce the effect of jamming. Let us see how it, it reduces the effect. So what we have said is spread takes place like this. That means uh, uh, <coughs> He said x of t equal to uh, s of t signal into, into c of t. So in it, this is the uh, original signal. Signal. This is a uh, core. This is a spread signal. Okay. So this is what we have done. So how is it done? So you have a, a multiplier like this. So you have this uh, S of t, you have C of t, and you get X of t. This is what you will do. Now D spread. That means how to from X of t, how to get back S of t? S of t is our original signal. So this, is, this happens at the transmitter. Okay? This happens at the transmitter. So D spread happens at the receiver. Okay? This is the receiver. So what does it do? do so X of t, this is transmitter. And now let us say receiver, how it looks like. So in the receiver, you have uh, you have received the X of some, uh, let us say, call it R of T. Okay? So you see what the receiver does is, again, C of T, it multiplies, then uh, it passes the low cost filter, let us say, why is this low cost filter, will tell you later. And then you get back the S of T. Okay? So, Received signal. This is a transmitted signal. So received received signal R of t equal to x of t plus some i of t. I call it as i of t. This is the this is the interference, interference, jamming, or whatever you may call it, interference or jamming or whatever. Okay. This is the R of t. So what is, what is this over here? Uh, R1 of t, for example, R1 of t. So what is R1 of t is equal to R of t into C of t. Okay? This is what R1 of t. So what is R of t? R of t is x of t plus I of t, this is uh, uh, into C of t. What is this? X of t is uh, S of t into C of t. So S of t into C of t plus I of t is into C of t. So what is this? S of t into c square of t plus i of t into c of t. Now the c, as we said, is a, that is also a code. Code is a, a pulse waveform, either plus one or minus one. So c square is always one. So it does uh, the bit the chip is a, either either plus one or minus one. So c square is always 1, so this I can call it as s of t, since uh, c square of t is equal to 1, plus i of t into c of t. Okay. So this is the r1 of t. r1 of t, the s of t plus i of t into c of t. 
So S of T is a low pass low pass signal. Actually, this is what is the original signal. So we got the S of T in this process. If you have a multiplier C of T, multiplier C of T, got around this. So pass through a low pass meter. What happens is S of T is a low pass signal. Whereas this I of T and C of T, C of T is a wide band signal. So when it is multiplied with I of T interference, so interference gets multiplied with the wide band signal. It will still be wide. So so if I draw the spectrum of R one of T, okay, spectrum of R one of T, what happens is. Look like this. That is F <coughs> signal. There is original signal like this. This will be like this, and also there will be this one, this component. So this is the. This is due to due to due to I of T and C of T. due to and this is due to s of t sorry s of t this is spectrum r1 of the let us say so this part of it is due to s of t this spectrum is due to i of t into c of t so when i pass this through a low pass filter output of the low pass filter will be this This, this is the low pass filter band with W or uh, yeah W is minus W. Whereas this one is uh, um, um, uh, WSS, is it not? What was the spread spread bandwidth? So during this, if you pass this R one of T into S of T. R1 of T is passed through S of T uh, low pass filter. You will get S of T plus uh, this uh, interference. This interference in this is this part only. This part only. In other words, this this is the portion which will come out at the output of the uh, receiver. Whereas this one is rejected, this will be rejected. Only this this part signal strength is this much, whereas the interfere interfere is uh, very very low. So even though the signal was spread like that, and the jammer also was spread in the same band, at the receiver you are able to collapse the signal and make it very strong like this, whereas the jammer is kept there itself. So jammer is still remains in the same band. Whereas signal has been uh, collapsed and brought to uh, like this, so so the signal to noise ratio, signal to jamming power ratio is very high. Signal power is that much, jammer power is very small, and therefore uh, your required quality can be obtained. So all this was possible because of a particular property of the code. It was not that easy. So, so what we are doing is, we, when we have S of T, which is data which is to be transmitted. So what we do is, we want to spread the spectrum for which we generate a code with certain properties. That code is a, is a bit pack, one set of uh, uh, bits only, which is repeating over time. So this that code is multiplied with the original signal. And you get S of T, the spread signal, and that is basically multiplication, one multiplier. That's all. Got it. So you transmit it X of T. So X of T is transmitted, but what is received is X of T plus some I of T, which is interference or jamming. Something is getting added. That is what is getting into the receiver. Receiver also has, has got the multiplier. Which multiplies the received signal with the code. Now, this code is known to the receiver. We are intending to transmit to some known person. The known person will know this code. Then only he can multiply this and get these things. If suppose 
somebody happens to be an enemy, if they will not know this. Therefore, they can't get back the signal in this manner. So, it is known to the uh, intended receiver, friendly receiver, and he, he they also multiply the receive signal with the code and get R1 of T, R1 like this. So, after simplifying this R1 of T, we find this contains the signal in the baseband spectrum, whereas the interference in the spread spectrum. So, spread, spread the spectrum was uh, in a very low strength. So, the interference or jammer remains in the low signal level, whereas, uh, whereas, the, whereas the original signal has been enhanced to, to this band with the full power. So, Still, in the, uh, the jam, jammer has not been eliminated, but the effect of jammer has been relatively less compared to the original signal and the output of the receiver. That's what we have, we have been able to do. So, we transmit a very low level signal. In the very low level itself, uh, some jammer is present. And uh, at the receiver, the, the internal receiver enhances the signal by uh, correlating. Okay, this is actually you can call call it as a correlator. Okay, it is a correlator. The code is correlated with the received signal, and the original signal is enhanced, and the jammer remains in the same uh, strength. So this is how we are able to enhance the signal at the input uh, output of the receiver, and uh, survive communication in the in, in the presence of jamming. Okay. So this is called. This is how we can understand understand the concept of spread spectrum. So what I would like to show is that uh, so we needed a a technique using which the original spectrum is to be spread over a large bandwidth, but. Why we do? Because the channel uh, introduces this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, impairments, and therefore we would like to do this. So if you do this, what have what is the what is the advantage? Uh, how to do spread? We have we said we will use a code to multiply and then spread it like this. Now after spreading, we transmit uh, transmit uh, 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 like this, and then uh, we receive. In this manner, at the receiver, we find that the original signal can be enhanced and the, the uh, jammer signal can be kept as it is. That is how the spread uh, signal, spread spectrum signal, helps in reducing the effect of jamming. Um, What are the design parameters in this process? Uh, for, for us to know how much of um, how much of gain that we get by spread it, see what are we losing and what are we gaining. So we normally we lose something and gain something. What are we losing? Normally, if we want to transmit the data as it is, like this, we would have required only a bandwidth of uh, 1 by TB, that is uh, RB, uh, RB hertz or W hertz. That is the bandwidth required. And if you spread the spectrum in this manner and transmit in the channel, the bandwidth required in the channel will be 1 by TC, which is RC. RC is much greater than RB. For example, if you are transmitting the bits at the rate of, uh, let us say, 1 kilobits per second, RB, and if I generate the chips at the chip, has, this RC has to be much greater than RB, so let us say RC is uh, 100, so 100 times 100 kilobits per second, kilo chips per second, then the gain, it's called processing gain that we get is 100, 100 times gain we will get. That means 100 times 
you can reduce the effect of jamming. But at what ex expense? 100 times more bandwidth is to be provided. Here you would have provided only 1 hertz of bandwidth in the transmission medium and then uh, get the successful communication. Whereas in this case, you require 100 hertz to transmit the same signal uh, and then get successful communication. Okay, so here we are spending extra bandwidth to achieve a survival communication in presence of uh, fossil environment like jamming. So now the question is, which is more costlier than what? So bandwidth, as far as the communication system engineer is concerned, bandwidth is the costliest resource uh, that we have to handle, and power. Okay, bandwidth and power are the, you know they are interchangeably used, and they have to be uh, utilized in a very um, uh, careful manner. So, in this case, we have chosen to increase or expand the bandwidth, and we have chosen to spend a lot of bandwidth, but we otherwise what happens is communication will not survive. Unless we want to survive the communication, so for which what we want to do is we want to throw all our resources into this and survive in the communication. That is the approach there. So they don't mind if somebody is operating uh, uh, in, a, in a fossil environment, they won't mind uh, using all the resources to survive communication. There may one communication may be surviving, so that communication will be survived, you spend all the resources to band this particular band. Whereas, if it is a civilian environment, there is no such jamming, so we need not resort to this uh, spread spectrum uh, communication for, for the purpose of uh, uh, channel impairment. But then still people use civilian, when I was doing my research, PhD at the time this, this technique was predominantly used in the, in the military field. But later on, uh, it found a lot of civilian applications like uh, you know multi um, uh, interference rejection in a multipath environment, which is a very important mobile communication. Mobile communication, this spectrum technique is very essential, and uh, people largely use this technique in order to. Uh, uh, reduce the effect of inter interference. So, uh, we will come to that, understand it later. So, at the moment, it is enough if you understand that spreading the spectrum requires expensive, expensive bandwidth, but we are achieving successful communication in the presence of uh, a fossil environment like jamming. Otherwise, communication will not survive. So, what we lose is bandwidth, what we gain is successful communication in presence of uh, jamming. So, that is the, that is to be understood. So, how much of, how much of uh, reduction in effect of jamming, that is determined by PG. So, pro, uh, processing gain, the processing gain is RC by RB and RPB by PC. So, RB is the bit rate which is not in, in our hand. Somebody uh, gives you a digital speech, a digital video, digital data, whatever it is, at a particular rate to be transmitted. Somebody tells you to do this. It is for you to select what should be the RC. Now, RC is, is a design parameter. Who will decide about the RC, this ratio, PG, how many times I have to spend the, increase the bandwidth, depends upon how severe the jamming is, how severe is the impairment in the channel is. Depending upon that, you will choose the RC, the rate at which you generate the code. So that is one thing. What type of code is to be selected for this purpose is another design uh, issue, uh, which is which will dictate certain other uh, receiver uh, performances. So, designer has to select appropriate code, appropriate um, uh, chip rate to get required gain, crossing gain. So, these are the design parameters as far as this particular system is concerned. So, I think we have understood uh, 
what is spread spectrum how to spread why to spread uh, how it helps uh, uh, reduce the effect of jamming and how whatever we, uh, what we lose and what we gain so we are the expense of bandwidth only we achieve uh, successful communication in terms of jamming these are the uh, these are the take, take home uh, points so take away from this particular lecture and uh, if you understood this we can proceed to understand more about this code okay, we require to understand this uh, this little more so that uh, you will appreciate even more about the about the uh, advantages that we have uh, explained thank you